Hello and welcome to How To Mom's Way. Today we're gonna make miniature Monte Cristos. So you're gonna need white bread, so a loaf of white bread. How many pieces that you're gonna use depends on how many people are eating them. Each piece of bread, you get three mini Monte Cristos out of. So you'll have to decide on how much. Today we're only gonna make uh, four. So you're gonna need that. You're gonna need some, either you could use turkey. I just buy what's already pre-made off the shelf. You could buy ham. Um, one of those two, um, you can mix them, you could put two pieces in, but I usually just do the one. So today we're gonna make the turkey Monte Cristos. You're gonna need Swiss cheese. I just get the store brand Swiss cheese. This happens to be a pack of 16, and we're just gonna use four today. You're also gonna need mustard. Um, I use spicy brown mustard, you could use the yellow mustard, but something that doesn't have a lot, like the seeds and things in there, um, that way it, it smooths on really easily. And then when we go and make the batter for the Monte Cristos, we're gonna need buttermilk. So I just bought this. It just says buttermilk pancake mix. That works for making Monte Cristos. It needs to say buttermilk on it though. And I'll go in at the very end, I'll have the amounts that you need for the recipe. Then you're gonna need um, carnation evaporated milk or any kind of evaporated milk. I just like carnation. And then you're gonna need oil for frying them later. So I just buy Crisco vegetable oil. You can buy probably any oil. I've not tried like coconut oil or I've not tried almond oil. I usually just use that Crisco oil. Uh, it seems to work the best. So what you're going to, and you're gonna need salt as well and two eggs and ground cinnamon. Again, I'll have the recipe at the end for you guys. So what I'm gonna do is each, I kind of take two at a time and I'm gonna cut the crust off when we go to flatten these out, it they flatten better without the crust on and when we go to fry them as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the ends off. You're also gonna need some saran wrap because as we make these, they need to sit in the refrigerator for at least, at least two hours, three hours. Um, it's better if they sit overnight. So when you go ahead and unwrap them and you go to cut them and fry them, they don't fall apart. So if you try and do this while it's um, without them being refrigerated and cold, they don't seem to hold together when you go to fry them. They typically kind of open up. So I like to refrigerate them for at least two to three hours if I'm going to eat them the same day that I'm prepping them. Um, if not, I try and wait till the next day to go ahead and eat them. So I'm just putting one piece of sliced cheese down and then I'm going to put one piece of turkey down, I just kind of fold it up here. And then I just take it and I'm going to roll it up. But first, make sure you have your saran wrap cut. I thought I had some pieces cut, I guess I don't. You just need, this will roll if you kind of do about, I don't know, about that big. I don't know how that is because I didn't measure it because again, it's how to mom's way. Um, and I just kind of set it down next to where I'm going to roll my Monte Cristo and I'm just going to roll it up and I kind of just tuck the turkey in at the top. Then I take my roll and I stick it onto the plastic wrap, the saran wrap. I just get enough to where it covers it and then I fold the ends and then I stick it in a container, which I don't currently have out. So I'm just going to set them off to the side. And then I keep going. So then I get my rolling pin. I flatten out the bread. If you don't have a rolling pin, I'm sure you could use something else. I just use a heavy rolling pin. This is marble. It just is heavier and it flattens that bread quicker. And I just put a little bit. You don't need a lot of mustard, just a very little bit. I just kind of use this spreader that I use for barbecue sauce basting. I just put a little bit on my my bread, you don't, again, you don't need a lot of mustard, even less than that is probably okay. Unwrap my cheese, stick it on there. You could get fresh cut cheese at the deli if you wanted, same with your turkey, but I like that it's already packaged, ready to go for me. So when I come home, I already have everything. I don't have to do anything else. I can just get going and start rolling these up and making them. So I'll bring my saran wrap over so you guys can see. So I make sure you kind of get a tight roll and then you're just gonna set it down, pull it over, roll it up, fold the ends over. 
And then that's what's gonna sit in your fridge for, like I said, at least two to three hours overnight is better because then it forms together. So when you undo the saran wrap to stick it in the batter, and put it in that frying oil, it will not fall apart when you're cooking and you'll get nice Monte Cristos, nice formed Monte Cristos. All right, so right now I'm making this. I said I'm making just four of them today and I'm making them for two people. So that's gonna give me 12 Monte Cristo sandwiches and they're actually really filling. So you think, oh, that's not that many, they're small. They are small, we'll show you when um, they're done, but they fill you up. Um, so don't think you have to make more because they're small. I promise you they fill you up and you're full and you don't wanna waste them. You can also, if you, if you make more than you're eating for the day, you can go ahead and put them in your refrigerator and then you can go ahead and warm them back up in the oven uh, for about 10 minutes at 375 or for about 400, um, eight to 10 minutes. And then you can, in the oven, and then you can have them again. I like to top these two with powdered sugar um, at the very end. I kind of dust them at the top before we eat them. I don't do a dipping sauce. You'll probably see online, there's some recipes that use a dipping sauce. I don't use a dipping sauce. So we just kind of flour dust them with that powdered sugar. And oh my gosh. They are super yummy. So here I'm doing my last one. Again, that cheese. I didn't put as much on as that last one. Grab a piece of turkey. Again, thinly sliced works better. I just bought this, like, like I said, at the, the grocery store. I just bought the Hillshire's Farm turkey and I just got the thin cut turkey. I'm sure the thicker one would work. I've never done the thicker one. I've done the thicker cheese and it kind of unravels at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick these in the fridge and then um, I'll come back and then show you what we do with the rest of them. All right. So after you've cut up your sandwiches and you've made your threes, you're just going to stick them in your container. You're going to take them over here. You're going to add some oil. So I already got this back here. I'm just going to add my Crisco oil. So remember just Crisco vegetable oil is what I use. And I'm gonna pour it into my pan. I'm gonna pretty much use all, like the entire container. Just about, this one is 48 ounces. They do have a 40 ounce, but you're pretty much gonna use a whole container because you need these guys submerged. So it, they crisp up really quickly on both sides. And you're gonna go ahead and turn on your oven top and then you don't want it to get super hot. So I kind of start out at five and then I kind of lower it. I'll probably go change it right now to 4.0. You kind of know your oven, you don't want it any hotter than 375 or it just burns them. So as soon as that's ready, we'll go ahead and get started. So we're going ahead and we're gonna make our batter now. Remember, you're gonna need that buttermilk baking mix. You're gonna need salt. So you're gonna need a, a quarter teaspoon of salt. You're gonna need cinnamon. You're gonna need an eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon. You're also going to need evaporated milk. Again, it doesn't have to be carnation. None of these have to be store brand. They can be generic. So you're gonna start with your baking mix. You're gonna need one cup of your buttermilk baking mix. And then you're gonna need two eggs which I forgot to grab. All right, so I got my two eggs. I'm gonna go ahead and get those cracked. And then you can use a mixer. Um, I like to use a whisk to whisk it together, which is what I'm gonna use here. So I'm just gonna kind of, you're just mixing up the, buttermilk um, mix in the two eggs. Just kind of making it this paste thing. I'll kind of show you guys what that looks like. So it kind of gets stuck in the whisk, but as soon as we put in the other ingredients, it will come right out. So I said we're gonna need one eighth of a teaspoon of cinnamon. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that in there. 
Then you're gonna need one quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to, this is a 12 ounce can. You only need five and a third um, ounces of this. There is a smaller can. I think it's five and a half ounces. That would be perfect if you're making the smaller batch. Again, I'm gonna put the recipe at the end. Um, but if you're making a larger batch or double it, you'll need that full can. So I'm gonna pour that five and a half ounces right into my bowl. All right. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and mix that up. Remember how it was stuck? It just, it comes right out now out of that whisk. And then I'm just gonna stir it. So I want kind of like a pancake consistency, but a little bit runnier than you probably would normally do your pancakes because um, if it's too thick, your batter is too thick, what happens is when you stick it in the fryer, it um, takes a long time for the batter to brown up. And then you, um, they kind of become soggy in the inside. So you kind of want it a thin coating onto the outside of your Monte Cristos. Right now, that's kind of really thin. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of um, buttermilk. I don't really have an amount for you. It's a how-to mom's way, but you need enough to kind of thicken it up a little bit so that's not as runny because as you're sitting here waiting for your oil on the stove to heat up, this kind of will thicken up a little bit. So I wouldn't make it any thicker than this. This is pretty much the consistency we want to use. And then you're going to take your pre-made rolls that you made yeah, that you made the day before, hopefully. I'm going to set this batter off to the side. And now is when you're going to unwrap them. So you're gonna unwrap these, and then you're gonna cut them into thirds. They don't have to be perfect thirds, just kinda, so I just cut them into thirds. You're gonna do that with all of them. But I'm gonna go ahead and um, get the oil. So it kinda takes a minute to find out where your fold was. And then you're gonna do all of this, and what I do is I have a container, I put them all in. I will just stick these back into this container and take them over to the stove when I'm ready. So over here is where I have my oil kind of already heating. I put the stove at five. Again, you don't want, you want it about 375. You don't want it warmer, any warmer than that because it'll burn that batter really quickly. Um, and then they'll just have this burnt taste to them. So again, I use that Crisco oil. This is a 48 ounce. I use the entire container because I kind of want to submerge them so they get crispy all the way around and trying to flip them um, once I put them in there. So I'll show you that in just a second. All right, so my oil is just about there. I'm gonna go ahead and get started because there's hungry people and if the oil is not quite at 375, it does work. It just takes a little bit longer. So I like to use the tongs to kind of move them around. What I do is I just drop them into the batter and then I just make sure they're coated all the way around. I kind of shake off the excess and then I just plop it into the pan. So I just make sure they're coated, shake off the excess, drop them in. Shake them off and drop them in. Shake them off and drop them in. You'll know that they're starting to be almost close to being done because they kind of start floating to the top. So again, I shake them off and plop them in. And I usually have a napkin right here. Let me grab one. So then I just kind of watch them. I can use my 
tongs to kind of turn them because sometimes they don't flip, they flip, there we go. And I just wanna flip them, just making sure they're fully in that oil. That's again why I put the oil, I use that whole container so they can float around in here. And then they're just gonna keep cooking until they're nice and golden brown. Probably like a minute or so, maybe two, depending on if your oil is ready. Mine was at 300, it wasn't quite at 375 when I started this. But as you can see, they're turning a nice golden brown, which is what we want. So I just kind of turn them, one, two, three, four, five, six. I usually have about seven going at once. I try not to put too many in here at one time because they're too hard to watch and control because a lot of times they get done right at the right at the same time and you don't want them to burn and you're trying to quickly pull them out. All right, so I have a couple that are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull them out. And I have this plate here with paper towels. I'm just gonna set them on. So the grease, excess grease goes on that paper towel and they don't say super greasy. So you just kind of have to keep flipping them over so all, all parts of it are getting ni that nice brown coating. Like this one guy, he wants to keep flipping over. I'm gonna turn this down. I had it at five just to kind of speed it up. I'm gonna turn it down to 4.5. Because again, I don't want my oil any warmer than the 375. Because if I do that, then they'll start burning out before they are done. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling these out. And then I just start over with my next batch. I usually come through and grab all of this extra like burnt pieces that you see here. And I kind of just stick them on a paper towel. That way they're not part of um, the next one I fry. They kind of stick together. And that's just that batter, that extra batter that was on there. I just try and get them off. So you start with clean oil again. And you just keep going. You just come back over here, do the same thing again. So I'm just gonna dredge one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna roll them, get them covered in that batter. Gently stick them in the oil because the oil is really hot right now. I had to turn down my flame. It was a little too warm. So I'm just gonna wash these because these will probably cook faster than the last batch just because my oil is a little warmer than I want it. Ouch, that's hot. I'm just drop them in, coat them, drop them in. Just again, make sure they're coated on all sides. No, oh, that's my dog, I'm sorry guys. And then you just keep doing that until they're all done. I just kind of wipe my hands off. So I can grab those tongs and start flipping them over. Because as you can see, they're already golden, getting golden brown, which is what you want. They don't take very long in the fryer. Again, that's why I put that's, that much oil in there so they can easily flip around and get nice and golden brown on all the sides. This one's already done. I kind of hold it, let some of that excess oil drip off.
And then I just have a few more left. And do the same thing with these guys, dredge them, and dump them in. And then the second, I'll cut one open and show you what they look like. I didn't get out the cooked pieces of the batter this time just because I wanna quickly get to what they look like for you guys. I know in some of my other videos, hey, you didn't show us the final product. So I wanna make sure I do that. So I top these guys with powdered sugar. Um, you don't have to, you can have a dip, um, some kind of uh, jelly, like a berry sauce or something like that. Um, but I really like the powdered sugar on them. So they do kind of roll on their own. I just kind of make sure that they are getting all of their sides evenly coated. Just kind of help them flip. This does kind of make a mess. It just splatters around on your stove. So that's again why I'm wearing this apron. I don't want to ruin too many shirts with oil. So, um, and even Dawn doesn't get all that oil out. So. I just wear this when I work with oil now. And this guy's done. So you're gonna see that they're nice and golden brown and that's what you're gonna pull out. I'm just holding this guy. He keeps flipping, but he's not quite done on that other side. Just a light golden brown, I, not too dark because you don't want them to, to be burnt. Just a, this light, light golden brown is what you want. We've got two more in here. And our last one. All right. I'm just gonna kind of move that off that burner. All right, so let me show you, cut one open for you guys. Here's my plate. We'll take one that's not as hot that just came off the stove. I'm gonna cut into that. There's all that cheese. And this is what it looks like on the inside. Everything's melted, ooey gooey, super yummy. And now I'm gonna eat them. Hope you enjoy, the recipe will be at the end. Thank you.